God bless you more and more and more every day, Remnant. I had a dream on Saturday, which would be the 27th, and I want to share it. I dream often, but certainly not every dream is prophetic or needed to be shared. But this one definitely is. So I'm going to share it, and I want to give a word to go with this. And the dream was pretty short. I was in a house. My parents were there. Uh, I lost my parents when I was 16, so that was pretty surprising. I didn't have a mirror to see myself, but I didn't seem young. Um, I can usually tell these things in my dreams, but I, so I was probably about this age. But we're in a house, and we seem to be on some acreage because the horizon was farther off. I'm in what must have been my bedroom, and I turn around to look out the window. I don't even think I meant to look out the window. I just turned around in my bedroom, and the window is open. And what I saw, I can still see now, a brilliant, bright red sky. Not like any sunset you've ever seen. They have been getting more and more red. But I'm talking... This made me do a double take. In the dream, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I was just really jaw dropped. And there was a bright full moon in this red, red sky. What I saw next was giant, I don't even know what to call them. Giant like boulders, but they were shaped like 3D rectangles, not perfect, but like that, uh, if you can imagine that, four-sided with the two sides on the end, and they were falling down from the sky like fire. The interesting thing was, as they started to fall closer to the window, and, and my dad at one point, because I called my parents, I'm like, do you see this? And my dad started leaning out the window, and I, I was like, Dad, come back in because I, I thought in the dream, like, if one of those hits him, it'll kill him. These things were the side, the size of like half of a really large man. They were gigantic. And the crazy thing was, when it hit the ground, one of them got several yards from the window, but I could see it. And it looked like ice. It looked like the biggest hail known to man. It was gigantic. So I don't know if these were like, um, fire, you know, if these were two separate things or for some reason, like, I'm not really sure. I just know when I saw that red sky, what was coming down from it was like fire, giant boulders. But then suddenly what I saw on the ground before me was like ice, um, also just gigantic. And I woke up a bit thereafter. And of course, what was put on my heart uh, I was really surprised. I haven't had a dream like this in several months. I have them journaled and, and primarily I'd shared these on my, my Instagram ministry when I, when I had that going, but um, I might just share some here, but I'll be perfectly honest. You know, all these, these prophetic dreams and, and, and these messages always at the base of any prophecy or prophetic dream or vision, anything is always telling us one thing, though they vary, you know, by edification or encouragement, they're telling us one thing. The Lord is coming sooner than we believe. He is coming sooner than we believe. Repent, because the time is drawing near. And, you know, the rapture aside, because some are really obsessed with it and think it's going to come, you know, really in tomorrow or the next day. But that's not biblical because everything that's written in the word must come to pass first. But with the rapture aside, whatever you believe about that, it is written specifically detailed that Jesus is coming. And this is a time to draw near. And I pray that none of us would be so prideful so as to think that we couldn't possibly draw any more near. We know it all. We're good here. You know, uh, very brash like Peter in his faith. Lord, I would never forsake you. Listen, when there's fire falling from the sky and all of a sudden you are starting to fall into the hysteria, it is really easy to, to be conformed back into the pattern of this world conformed into the fear that that brings. That's, that's scary for any of us, you know, and it's only by submission that we're able to stand in this world. So I encourage you to really double down, like the word from the other day, double down, get in the presence of the Lord more. What really more important do you have to do? 
spend more time in his presence, spend more time studying the word. And of course, the scripture I was brought to was in Matthew 12. And this is where first Jesus is, he's going around traveling with the disciples. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're demanding a sign. They've seen miracles and signs and wonders. They said, but they want more. They want more. They want Jesus, prove yourself more. And he says to them, it is an evil and adulterous generation that seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now the sign of Jonah is a reference to Jesus's death and the resurrection. And the thing is, people already had more than enough by that point to believe, but it was their wicked and adulterous hearts that didn't want to disbelieve that he was Lord. You know, it was like, um, you know, just keep proving it to us. We're not going to believe anyway. And he knew that because he knew the hearts of men. And, you know, what was really put on my heart, and this has been coming through a lot in the videos, is when you desire more than than Jesus's face, when when than God's face, Jesus, who is Lord, when you desire more than the presence of him, just his presence, we are, we are an evil and adulterous generation. The Lord is saying, just me just me alone, just me alone. And that's what he's saying. And you know, he also calls them hypocrites because he says to them, you can, you use the, the time, you can discern the, the skies, you can discern the stars, you can uh, learn, you can interpret all these signs, but you can't tell the signs of the times that you're living in. And this is really what he's saying to us is, more, you know, my people continue to desire more than me. And, and we've been, this has been coming through a lot too, is, is like even the garden who desired more. She had everything she could possibly want in that garden. Companionship, God's presence above all, you know, all the trees and all the good fruit and all the beautiful land. And it wasn't enough because she desired more. And that was illustrated when Satan was like, the serpent was like, you can be like God. You know, I know you walk with him now, but you can be like God. Are you sure that he said that? you know, you would die because that's not even true. And so many are being deceived and led astray by their desire for more. And many people are out here interpreting signs and omens, which is divination. And the Lord is just saying, hypocrites, you're a wicked and evil, adulterous generation. Adultery in the Bible is all about going astray in your heart. Psalm 24, which has been coming up a lot, is all about uh, the generation that seeks the Lord's face. He calls them Jacob. Those that seek his face, that is true loyalty. You know, he's looking for faithfulness. That's it. He wants you to be faithful. He wants each of us to be faithful and to seek him now more than ever. Draw near. I said on our prayer session the other day that I had this, this sense that the Lord was really drawing the flock tight, really, really, really getting us tight. There's a word that's coming to my heart from several months ago. Brace yourselves. You know, can, are we so blind? Are we so distracted? Do we so desire more than the Lord that the Bible's right in front of us telling us exactly what's about to come to pass? And yet still out here, we're just so adulterous. We just are looking everywhere else and just lost in our feelings and our emotions and habitual sin for some still. You know, let us not be deceived. I don't care what anybody else is doing out here. As for you and your house, who are you going to serve? Let that be known to the Lord himself and let that be known by your actions. Be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Because this is very real. What's going to come to pass in this world is very real. And again, what you believe about the rapture aside, what you believe about anything aside, no one's going to get scooped off of this earth without experiencing everything Jesus Christ said was going to come to pass in, in Matthew 24. And we shouldn't desire more than the Lord at this time than what's written in his word, because that is the ultimate preparation. Are we willing to sit still to be transformed? Are we going to take that salvation and run? Because that'll just run you into a dead faith. That gasoline's going to run out. If you don't submit to the Lord each and every day and just seek his face, stop desiring more. Command your flesh to fall in line with every word of God. Don't let it overcome you so that he's not enough. So that you become adulterous in your heart. So that you become so prideful so as to think, oh, I know the Bible and I'm already saved. So what else you got, Lord? 
let's really humble ourselves before the Lord because every word of God is true and the Lord is seeking. That's what the word says, seeking that Jacob generation that seeks his face. And you know what, family, he is worthy. He's worthy of that, of our undivided attention, of our undivided hearts. Yes, Holy Spirit, of a heart that's not divided. He wants all of us. He wants all of you, all of you. He loves you dearly. He made you, purposed you just as you are. And he wants all of you submitted to him. In Jesus' name, God bless you more and more, family.